Most uh, respected faculty for this evening, Advocate Prem Kamar, other senior members and managing committee members. A warm good evening to all of you. So today we have a CP seminar on uh, latest uh, developments in intellectual property rights, IPR. Actually, we know uh, we get many queries regarding various uh, uh, is from our clients regarding this IPR and uh, now I think the trademarks or uh, uh, brand uh, registration many things are coming to chartered accountants and even if you look at the uh, the present uh, business environment a lot of uh, intellectual property uh, rights are required by the young businessmen who are you know innovative uh, in the business or services, they always come to us and ask how we can protect our, you know, name or our our uh, service that uh, you know or their product. How can we protect it uh, from you know uh, from competition or it, it, not only in India from even international. So many many queries like that we receive chartered accountants uh, receive from uh, our clients. So today I hope uh, we have a very, very uh, eminent, uh, uh, eminent uh, personality here to discuss on the IPR, intellectual property rights and various provisions of it and latest developments and uh, the opportunities for the professionals also. I hope you will like, uh, uh, you'll, uh, you know, discuss and uh, uh, detail certain opportunity we can as a chartered accountant we can do in this area, uh, IPR. So, uh, Advocate Prem Kamath, I very heartily welcome you to this uh, CP seminar. Any questions? Any questions? I welcome all the managing committee members to this uh, program and also our uh, members who have joined uh, offline and online to this uh, uh, CP seminar. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Our speaker for today is Advocate Prem Kamath. He's a lawyer practicing in High Court of Kerala for two decades on standing in the bar. He's passionate about cybercrime, cybersecurity, data privacy, e commerce, social media, digital marketing, and their life. He has made immense impact as an expert with international exposure. He provides workshops, training lectures, and he's a critical lecturer to academic institutions, law enforcement agencies, and IT in the state corporate. He's a guest faculty at Middlesex University, Dubai, and he's an expert in UAE cyber laws. It is a gentleman's pleasure to ask speaker over today and to get frame coming. I'll have to handle it from here. Then. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would uh, just like to make it evident that it might not be a core area of mine, what I'm trying to discuss. But yes, uh, it's an allied area which I focus on. Uh, since the time Mr. Chairman had contacted me, I was just trying to decipher how to bring in the session discussion as making it as relevant as possible. I've made a presentation which will uh, go through as in how we progress. And uh, the flow of the presentation is like, uh, we'll take uh, different areas of IPR, have an idea about what it is, its requirements, uh, the consequences of infringement, 
and some visuals with which we can directly understand what it caters to and uh, a few case studies as well with it so we will cover something like uh, a very vast area but in a capsule form so we can start with the presentation uh, i would just uh, i would probably probably give you this presentation after the uh, session is over but uh, i would prefer and after coming here i understand it is board online and offline so i was intending to have it in a interactive mode where the audience could shoot questions directly uh, i i believe that the people online would be only one way they might not be able to speak to us right they can they can okay fine then it makes sense no issue so i would just request uh, whoever are with us today to uh, feel free to ask questions and uh, i shall make my earnest efforts to answer it in the best possible manner so we start with that uh, today's times if we compare to the last 20 years or 30 years may information has become very vital in all areas of business or life now connecting information i could say data has become more priceless data is a word which has been coined and which has come up and matured in the information communication technology era the same data we had which was basically on the physical format when probably most of us might have begun practice but then we have seen the transcendent of uh, transcendence of uh, the paper documentation to the paperless and so when we discuss about data it is more on intangible uh, the side of data and uh, if we if when i was small i used to remember i used to see a, a, a quote saying that information is power now we can say that data is power and data is a new gold there are a lot of new proverbs which have come in connecting it with data so having said that concept of ipr intellectual property as it says intellectual property so whatever which springs from original thought and that can be understood or it could be tangible or intangible both all form in some manner or the other as a part of ip which is intellectual property now to consider the laws which india has of course with going to the factor that india is a un member and uh, we have been signatories to various conventions uh, which have been prompted by the un like gat trips etc without going to the details of those conventions but yes to the fact that the the obligations of a member state of the un india has to uh, had to uh, be relevant by creating and formulating and implementing laws relating to ipr and uh, most of the laws which are more western oriented but then we have got the indian side of it as well for example if we take the copyright act when we take the trademark act then we take the patent act then we have the geographical indications etc all those are concepts which have become more prominent from the push from the west so the un contribution and the member state obligation created the pressure and the requirement and the need to update our laws in tune with that of the us relating to ipr so starting with uh, uh, the first area of law i have spoken on all these so i don't want the slides to be a repetition nature of intellectual property as i just said if you can just have a look at the uh, slide it is with regard to ideas invention science information so there is a, a a school which now advocates that maybe even a thought can be ip now i i would require the audience here as well as offline i mean as as well as online to uh, uh, give in their uh, feedbacks immediately when i say something like thought could be ip for example if i am thinking of establishing uh, my office in a particular manner with a particular uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, service capability etc and somebody reads it and he goes and implements it is that 
a theft of ipr or could that form a theft of ipr might not be very strictly within the laws but yes is that intellectual property for sure is a thought it's original it's not copy something which i am orienting myself and this for the fact that somebody could understand it read it implement it faster doesn't mean that my original thought does not remain in origin it was the source of it there have been situations where we understand and uh, we have uh, information on in the public domain that uh, researchers are already already uh, making uh, uh, huge steps to create software that could read the mind i might be slightly digressing from the core area but what i'm trying to uh, express is a basic thought itself could be a property in due course we never know that you have these situations where uh, there was one instance which i read about is uh, the you have an mri related stuff figured to a monkey's brain and what the monkey was thinking was typed on the screen like the monkey was thinking about a tree and a fruit so that was typed so it means that the software and technology could read the mind of the monkey and type it so this could happen with us as well so the thought process which is original creates something which is valuable and becomes intellectual property now moving from 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 there and if that is so then we have a requirement of tangible and intangible as well but going on i would take forward with times of ipr the first of what with i would like to discuss is copyright i think all of us have a basic idea of what is copyright right regarding uh, uh, the uh, literary artistic musical dramatic and recordings now i would like to make it slightly interesting with uh, some issues which are now prevalent and i'm sure some all of you also might have faced piracy with movies most of your clients could be you know producers or directors or uh, actors as well and there are situations which have come before me where uh, the movie before being released has been already uploaded online so the amount of effort money expense etc put in to bring in the movie goes down the drain just because it's freely available even before it is released the movie is of course copyrighted and the songs etc rights etc producer rights everything you have the laws intact but the fact remains that in a second it's uploaded and uh, millions of people view it download it view it and share it so the person who came to me was the producer who asked what is the use of us spending so much and going and aligning with the complying with the law going through the process spending the money and ultimately you see that before the movie is released it is already online very difficult area because what happens is the cases which have come to me it has been uploaded not within the territories of india one had come which was uploaded from australia one had come which was uploaded from texas and uh, if you see that the global arena has shrunk with the information communication technology age at the same time the difficulty is how to regulate it of course the person is protected by copyright but then the fact remains how do you prosecute whom do you prosecute where do you prosecute and how effectively you could prosecute for example we could trace out that it was uploaded from so and so place in texas we could trace out there's a technology which is called watermark which is now being used extensively by the movie industry so by which the watermark which is provided gives you a identification of the movie which is not seen it's behind just like the watermark in paper which we see saying bond paper and all that same thing so we could trace out but then the fact remains we have a process as jurisdiction which is in india copyright act india we have the requirements where it could be sued territorially 
all the laws are territorially oriented unfortunately information and com communication technology or the internet gives scant respect to territoriality it is global as we said there could be so many people who might be online today from various parts of the country or maybe even beyond the shores of india listening to what we are saying and this was not the scene uh, 40 50 years back it was more uh, uh, traditional if i can use that word so the concept what i am coming forward is we do have the laws we do have the provisions we do have the penal consequences which we will go through but please bear in mind that if a client i was embarrassed when the client came me and asked me what is the use and as a lawyer if i am not able to provide him legal services which can satisfy or find a solution for what he has undergone and suffered the law remains only a paper book so this is something factually which is happening is a turn of events after you know the traditional kinds of stuff which have become now paperless so copyright movies is a big issue the major chunk of a gang which has been doing it is uh, supposed to be from tamil nadu there have been steps taken by the uh, enforcement area agencies to nab one person but then one person is not enough there are other people who can upload it from elsewhere one key thing if anybody could assist me with how does it happen the 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 example which i said movie it's done within a very close group of people yet somebody gets the copy of it obviously there should be an insider basic concept there should be an insider we never know who the insider is it could be anybody who is with us who is helping us who provide we might never even trust i mean we might never even doubt him it could be him it could be anybody else but there is surely an insider so coming back to that uh, in uh, the information communication technology age however sure we are with the laws however sure we are there is a human error somewhere or the other we can connect with that as we progress now coming back to copyrights i can say just to enlighten all of you most of you might be aware of it but i'm just taking the freedom of just reiterating it that the copyright lasts for 60 years from the death of the original uh, copyright holder so if you are copywriting maybe a story or if you are copywriting maybe a, a a a raga or a particular symphony and if you get your copyright done the validity of it remains even 60 years beyond your lifetime I have all of us understood there was one scene where uh, maestro elay raja sent a notice to sp balasubramanian who was performing in us at that time both of them are the the closest of friends and it has been so for years and decades in fact spb has made most of the songs which have been composed by uh, elay raja famous by his voice and his rendition but the fact remains that a notice was sent a legal notice was sent to spb from elay raja here stating that if you do that and if you sing my songs there without my permission i might sue you so the importance of how the maestro ayur elay raja thought of this after so many years this was being done from long time all of the singers used to go and sing on stage and most of the singers are only singers they don't compose of course there are some uh, music directors who sing as well but normally they're only singers it never happened that somebody sends you a notice and says that mind you if you sing my songs without my permission i'm going to see you so this happened in the enlightened age of information communication of course spb was uh, very gracious enough to say i was not aware of it and if you feel so i shall not do it and so rested the controversy it was not scaled up to a different level it was just hushed up because of his grace maybe it was somebody else it might have taken a different turn but all said and done elay raja asserted his rights this is what i want to after that we move forward to registration procedure i have a flow chart i don't know if it's clear i could just do it to fit it into the so i'll just go with the flow chart it uh, and to let you know that basically you don't require a, a lawyer or somebody who is uh, 
known with law to go in with the procedure. The procedure has come down and made it very simple. Anybody, including the person who wants to do the copyright, can easily follow the procedure. You have everything available online. You have a format. You need to fill the fill the form, and uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, pay the fee. And the fee is according to what is being uh, required to be copyrighted. I mean, uh, taken the copyright off. Then you 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 are given a number. A 30 days of mandatory time is there, waiting for objection from anybody. If somebody has an objection, you could bring in the objection. If the objections are filed, yes. The objections are considered by the scrutiny person and if they find that it is something serious then it comes with regard to uh, a hearing with regard to the objection then people go and uh, uh, fight out their uh, uh, requirements as to how original the, uh, the uh, subject matter is and after the hearing there is a decision which is provided with regard to yes or no now suppose there is no objection filed, then you have uh, the uh, next uh, level of it where the application accepted and uh, it is processed and it is approved by the WC registrar and the registration approved and then it comes to the issuance of the copyright protection. Now if just for the benefit of somebody who would feel what is the time frame of all these? We have just spoken about the process, but what is the time frame for copyright? Normal time frame without objections, if there is nobody objecting it, comes to six months. So, if from the time of filing the applications, you can say that within six to eight months, it's probably fine to get your uh, uh, copyright done. Something very visual so that we don't get bored. It's a case which has happened. It's with regard to a movie and uh, this was a copyright infringement suit which was filed against Sri Shai, Sri Sai Ganesh Productions by Yashraj Films Private Limited on the grounds that uh, it blatantly copied the movie Band Baja Bharat. It was a very famous movie. You could see the left side, uh, the left portion of the uh, uh, visual which shows the uh, maybe a poster of Band Baja Bharat and the right one was the movie which was alleged to be the infringement. And the allegation was the terms of the theme, the concept, the plot, the character, the sketches, the story, the script, the form, and the expression were all blatantly copied. And it was before a court, and the court extended the test of originality. So obviously, Band Baja Bharat was released before. So the originality was always leaning on the side of the movie Band Baja Bharat of Yashraj Films. And on the basis of the same, the court found that the other side, the, the, the infringer, had uh, copied and infringed. And then the case was defied, decided in favor of the plaintiffs, which is banned Baja uh, Bara. So this is something which is very contemporary, which that's why I thought of uh, sharing it with you. Now, uh, types of corporate inf infringement, you have these technical terms primary infringement and secondary infringement. I don't want you to rake up your mind onto all that. Primary in, in, in infringement is something which can be directly related to it. For example, if, uh, uh, if I can say, it is not an issue which is uh, uh, brought before the courts, but as a child, I had heard uh, music director Bappi Lahiri. A lot of tunes which have been probably sounding similar to Western tunes. For example, you have that uh, very famous disco dancer. It is uh, very similar to a Western song. Now, if the other director feels appropriate and if he has a copyright protection for him, of course, he can always sue and say that this is something which is very directly similar to mine. So that is uh, the primary infringement. And uh, the secondary is absolutely as what we understand in common terms, which has a similar similarity to the original stuff. Anyway, similar, it could be by the theme, it could be by the color, it could be by the orientation. All of these taken together can be understood to be a secondary. But to understand that literary, dramatic, musical, and what else? Before I forget, recording and artistic, all these areas can be brought under the uh, protection of copyright. Now a question. In today's age, software is 
the 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 age of today is of software softwares are basically built on soft on source codes so that's an original creation source code or at least it's expected to be an original creation for each i may be corrected on that because a lot of people copy source codes but then keeping in mind what we are trying to discuss now can a source code be copyrighted that's a question posed to all of us i would be happy if somebody can give their mind who said yes 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 can you give a, a, a reason for that how you came up to the conclusion of yes yeah. can somebody no mic la you have mic please speak no no just for the no no just for the benefit of people who are online otherwise they might not hear you yes what you said is absolutely fine i would take you to something more specific since i've been you know uh, mr chairman was kind enough to say i mean eminent speaker so i need to show some eminence okay so what you said is absolutely absolutely fine but just to uh, satisfy uh, the fact that it could be legally connected as well uh, we would go to section 2 ffc of the copyright act i would just read it out it defines what is a computer program and it says computer program means a set of instructions expressed in words codes schemes or in any other form including a machine readable form now what do you understand by a machine readable form binary yeah so it's only zeros and ones we won't be able to decipher it by a common human mind it's done for the machine to decipher and then by the way of by the way of a software we can read it in readable form so even that is included included including a machine readable medium capable of causing a computer to perform a particular task or achieve a particular result so this is to uh, section 2 uh clause ffc keeping that in mind we will go to clause o which defines a literary work so we have gone through what is a computer program and we connect it with literary work which says literary work includes computer programs tables and compilations including computer databases so the terminology computer programs which we just looked at in ffc has been connected to o here so keeping these two in mind we can safely conclude that the law includes that even software programs are copyrighted okay factually you are right legally just to give a bit of a extra added info procedure we have finished this is done second review done okay i although the slide is this i would like to discuss something more uh, peppy because reading all those becomes very boring infringements of copyrights could be on various types for example i came up up a friend of mine is doing all this stuff in delhi so he keeps posting on linkedin so there are areas where he went and he could find out uh, uh nirma detergent so the uh, the stuff i mean that might not be copyright as such because you said take the logo it might come into trademark but then the, the whole set all stuff on infringement that what i am trying to say it is like duplicating or infringing so on the aspect of that any idea of what could be an infringement of copyright of course i gave an idea about the song where most of the songs now sound very similar that if you say 40 50 year old song somewhere it connects even as laymen who don't understand a raga you can still identify that it is copied from somewhere so it, it could be an infringement but i don't know how uh, things still go on because the songs are all registered as copyrighted 
but all said and done it's part of the industry apart from that something else which you find as infringement copyright uh if i take an example of phd thesis it needs to be original for you to stand and defend so and if it is cop copied and pasted from somewhere else it could be a copyright infringement of course they check it they check it over plagiarisms and you have softwares to check it as well but that is one area which i could say something better in copyright maybe as we progress i'll share it with you now this is something relevant to all of us as practitioners jurisdiction for filing suits against infringement so the primary jurisdiction goes to the district court i have the mic it goes to district court and uh, it's a civil proceedings where by which we can file a, a, a proper uh, petition before the court and uh, pursue it and the section which says for that is 6021 of the copyright act i don't need all of going for the sections just being very okay now this is one case study which is there from uh, the delhi high court in the year 2016 regarding preparation of course packs compilation of photocopies ah i got one copyright my son is studying in for the third semester in law in the law college here so law books are pretty costly so i tell him that uh, so and so uh, law book center houses my friend shop feel free to go there let him know that you are my son and take the books you want and we'll settle the deal so he tells me dad don't waste money of course i will not give out details of the place because it is pretty near what, what i'm talking about there is one man sitting under a huge building in the center of the city you just go to him tell him you require this book he'll just bend down take it out give you photocopied pakka book of any law you want is being done under the nose of the law enforcement i won't be able to share more than that because i don't want the poor guy to lose his uh, uh, minimum earnings but the fact remains that is it an infringement of course it is you have a author who spent so much of time and he gets the copyright and he markets the book through a, a, a distributor a seller and somebody sitting in one corner of a city with just investment of one uh, photocopying machine coolly copies it and gives it and you know the price of the books 100 bucks 120 bucks 150 bucks 200 bucks that's the price range of books that comes between 1500 to 2000 rupees if you go in for the original original so is that an infringement of course it's an infringement but then it's happening as well so the fact remains in so these are uh, some areas which we need to be aware of yeah one more area. we all listen to music we love music we love songs we love to have our songs at our fingertips maybe even in our pen drives in our car in our phone as a ringtone whatever have we ever thought that downloading of a song could be an infringement could it be an infringement but do we do it we do do it A apart from that even more rampant even more rampant uh, microsoft uh, windows okay i'm sure uh, and i was i was addressing one it uh, audience of say around 200 people and we are talking about cyber security hardcore cyber security and i'm talking about law i just ask a question how many of us here have original softwares hardly 10 out of 200 10 people so the rest are still working and they are on windows so what are they trying to do is that an infringement of course i still remember in the year say 2007 or 10 there was a huge scare in ernakulam city where people from microsoft had come down in person and taken the law enforcement with them into institutions and seen that they were prosecuted but luckily it was only on institutions not private people because most of us are on the same so the fact remains that even if we do it in day to day time day to day life it's an infringement if you are caught on the other side of law you are hauled up 
So the fact remains that we could say chalta hai till the time it is chalta hai. But if the law takes its turn, we are caught. So with that, I think copyright is pretty uh, over for that. Any other, any questions? You can please raise it. Copyright and software. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's an interesting question. No, I need to answer that uh, after I work up a bit, but I'll get back to you on that for sure. Yes, because corporates are entities and corporates are not uh, some like the humans that we uh, we are no more after a time. It could be possible that there is a wind up and all that, but then normally keeping in mind that the companies last longer. I need to get back to you on that with that, because yes, companies do own copyrights. And as far as the law is concerned, at the moment, if the law is clear, it says 60, 60 years from so and so. So keeping in mind that a company does not, it will have to uh, go in for a, a re-registration to enhance the uh, registration once more. That is one thing which can be practically done because you don't have a lifetime for a company as such. It's more considered towards humans. So you have a re-registration after 60 years. But that was a great question. It took me off for a moment, but then I came back again on it. Thank you. So this is how the law develops. You know, if we don't have an original thought, we are all following something on paper book issues. So as you said, we, we all deal with companies, but the thought about a company owning a copyright and what happens after 60 years is an original thought. So thank you for that. Now coming back to uh, programs, I have discussed this, so I don't want to go into it once more. We have discussed about uh, what uh, uh, software is. We come to the next, which is patent. Now, what do we understand with the terminology patents? What does it? Uh, sorry. Uh, patent could be a design as well, but something more simple. Uh, unique, yes. Created, original, created, not discovered, invented, and created both. Yep. So with that, and here we have the patent grant. Patent is granted for 20 years from the date of filing applications. Here's something interesting. I'm trying to patent something. For example, if I say that uh, patent of that particular bulb, what we see in the on the screen, I file my application. Now, what does the law says? Patent is granted for 20 years from the date of filing of application. So once we file our application, it has been basically accepted without any defects. And if in the meanwhile, before the patent is actually uh, granted, if there is somebody who infringes, are we protected? Why? So we need to be aware of that. If somebody comes and asks tomorrow, as professionals, maybe you could give a better advice. So 20 years from the date of filing of application. There is something with the or regarding to the international uh, filing also, which I can share. For the application filed under national phase under patent cooperation treaty, that is called PCT, the term of patent will be 20 years from the international filing date according to the PCT. The same thing which is done on the national level is taken care of by the PCT in the international level. It doesn't change. Process, I don't think we should go into it. It, it is available online. I don't need to. It has the same way that you file an application, then somebody challenges it and somebody does not challenge it. If somebody challenges it, then you have a hearing for overcoming what has the challenge. And if you succeed in it, then it goes to the next level, it gets approved, and then you get the patent. But yeah, yeah, yeah I'll come to that. This also uh, kept it handy. This was not uh, something which I was aware of, but then I uh, got it. The, 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 uh, for patents, it's be somewhere between one and a half to four years. It takes a longer time. Process is slightly more stringent because you are some creating something and you claim that I have invented it and I need these rights. So the, uh, the screening procedure is slightly stringent and the present scenario, which says it is between one and a half years to four years in the uh, area. But there could be a situation if there are objections and the hearings have to happen 
it could be in multiple stretches so it could stretch even more but normally four years max this one but all all the all uh, the while you could have a basic consolation that at least once granted you will have the protection from the date of filing so even if you come to know and if you see that somebody has infringed it you could relate it and you could still claim protection and damages and prosecute etc so that's one thing which is we'll have to close down yeah uh, i shall leave the ppt here so these can be circulated this is a this is a source which is available online i just took it and pasted it it could be seen by anybody now the criteria for patent this is just to discuss it should be unobvious it should be novel it should be useful statutory and the 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 most crucial it should be an invention something original it's not something which is discovered or something which is you know uh, uh, something which is not uh, original or invented so it should be unobvious which connects to it these are the four or five crucial elements for uh, patents here i have a case study for sharing with you it is with regard to uh, the mixi electric kettles the maharaja appliances limited we all know maharaja is a very famous brand so uh, the situation was that uh, strix limited is a british commentary uh, is a british company and it filed a suit against maharaja so what happened was strix was the uh, the company which had patented the uh, the mixi maharaja found out that a chinese company was getting it uh, cheaper and maybe in some way the quality which they felt is probably better so it switched over and it started importing stuff from the chinese company and marketing it so when the original company came to know about it they sued maharaja and then it was found that uh, 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 the court granted the application in fair, favor of uh, strix saying that yes it is an infringement of uh, patent with regard to the mixi so this is something which i took in because maharaja is familiar to us uh, same thing what is a direct infringement and what is a indirect infringement direct infringement is something which can be directly connected if you see and if you see that the invention is there and something is looking the same and you are copying the same and moving it out it is direct indirect is somewhere where it is similar and it can be connected in a secondary manner direct infringement occurs when a product that is substantially close to a patented product or inventions marketed sold or used commercially without permission from the owner of the patent product or invention direct infringement indirect is where we have an example here a holds a patent for a device and b manufactures a device which is substantially similar to a's device b is supplied with the product from another person to c to facilitate manufacturing of b's device if the device so manufactured by b infringes upon a's patent then the person c indirectly infringes a's patent there's something something very simple logical now as for the patent act the provision jurisdiction now suppose there is an infringement as copyright we had seen same same way if patent you find as an infringement of patent how do you proceed legally what can be done which is the jurisdiction which is the authority or the forum that you can uh, approach now 104 says that uh, no court inferior to a district court having jurisdiction so here also it's a district court to which is the court of first instance where you could institute appropriate proceedings regarding infringement of a patent bajaj auto limited was tv this is there's an interesting case it, it, it revolves around uh, spark plugs spark plugs that were originally patented by bajaj auto and then bajaj auto found that tvs motor companies you know making very similarly uh, similar uh, spark plugs and they were sued and uh, uh, here uh, interestingly what the court felt is the court held that if the exact technological combination as patented was used by tvs then it could have led to infringement but there were improvements that were made and that instead of two three walls were used so the technical aspect of understanding what is infringement was brought out by the court saying that it was not the same there was some improvement brought out so i mean debatable 
I don't want to go into the uh, debate of it. It's a Supreme Court decision. But yes, the fact is that there was a distinction made that it is not just the same product. They have put in their own skills, expertise, and brought it, and they have improvised it in a different manner. So uh, it, was, it, it was held that uh, uh, different combinations and modification of technology is used, and therefore it did not amount to an infringement. This is a very, uh, very, very serious area, pharmaceuticals and patent. Okay, I do not know if any of you have come across uh, any uh, first-hand requirement from your clients or not, but it's a very, it's a, it's a disturbing scene. It's a very serious issue where a lot of fake drugs are being marketed. Now, what is the patent? Patent is of the combination, patent is of the process, etc. All forms a part of a patent. It's very easy. I mean, there was situations where I, I do not know how far the uh, video is true or not, but I received a, 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 some videos stating that you have some capsules. I don't want to name the company because I'm a public forum, but you have some capsules. You open the capsules. Instead of the drug, you have uh, small nails in it. Um, half inch, not even half inch, small nails. Multiple capsules opened, all have nails into it. I mean, imagine somebody swallowing it, thinking it's a drug. It's a different concept, but yes, what I'm trying to stress is it is being marketed under a very well known brand. And the drug is named to be so and so. There is something which is called. So if we go and ask for parastomol in any uh, of the uh, pharmacies, they may say parastomol, that is the old name. We have something new like uh, some other name he'll say. And he'll say this is also parastomol. Why do they say that? Parastomol is the original of it, which has a particular combination, which has been made into the drug. Apart from that, the combination remains same, but the name changes. So the process is as well patented as well as the combination. This is very prevalent in India, especially I, I can't say North India or West India or South India. It is prevalent. So if you come or come across something, I mean, if some client of yours come and says, I don't know, there are not many pharmaceutical companies in Cochin or even in Kerala, I doubt. But probably if there is a situation, it comes, it's a serious issue with regard to patenting. And uh, uh, Apart from the patent requirements, imagine the effect of such spurious drugs being sold and ingested by patients and uh, the aftermath of it. So it's something very serious. We need to be alert to see that if you have some client approach you to uh, advise them appropriately to go in for a proper legal recourse so that a coitus is put it's not going to be easy, but at least we need to be alert enough to uh, start a trend to see that if there is an infringement, we need to focus on how to resolve it legally, especially pharmaceutical, because it takes off human health care. So I'm just stressing on it. With that, we move to the next, which is trademark. This is registration of patents and all that. You can. Yes. But it's a highly, highly technical area which needs uh, expertise and speciality because right, to to uh, write a convincing patent application form, it requires a different mindset and skill. There are people who specialize for it. Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 It might not be patent. It might not be patent, but you could surely bring in your service within a service mark. Mark, which is a part of trademark. We are coming to that. We are right on that. It's not patent. It's not an invention which brings out a product through your invention. 
for example the the uh, cfl bulb then we moved out to led bulbs all of it is a different invention which brought out a huge change in products here what we orient is service the service which we provide is not invented many others also provide the same service but then still we have a requirement to safeguard our service in a particular manner by identifying it and projecting it with that particular mark for example if i say now if we if we can just look at the screen if we have services so if you intend to have a uh, 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 exploring the area of your service in a particular manner for example the logo which we saw in your chamber you know it directly gives you an idea about what we are thinking of so something if you can create that way with regard to your firm or the services you provide in a visualistic manner and you can register it either as a trademark but if it is focused especially for service it could be registered as a service mark that could be done it would give you a different pitch a different league a different uh, projection in the industry where it is identifiable for example if we see the t of tatas we normally feel of tatas dependable so they have gathered that goodwill along the years which is now been fused and uh, you know uh, with the uh, trademark t the same way if we see it is you know it's an original idea which it brings out an invention or a product yes. product. yeah uh please because uh, recently one of my friends was he was talking to me about a business uh, plan and uh, he is going to run chain of uh, stores and he got a plan how to you know, market it or how to get uh, customers mm -hmm. he has a very unique plan yeah. very new which has not been heard of we are not heard about the uh, uh, so and he was saying i want to I I have my doubts on whether it could be a patent. I have I have my doubts on whether it could be patent. I could surely see that it could be made a trademark, or if the plan is something which is brought out in writing in a unique manner in a way in which it is. Uh, 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 but it's still a service. It's still a service. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Your idea. your core issue is: Can an idea be patented? Yeah. 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 but yes it could surely come within probably if it is appropriately done it could be a copyright or it could bring in trademark and service mark as well having all of it together as well depending on how you frame it up but certainly i don't think it could be a patent maybe future patenting is on a different uh, concept where you need yes yes something it's tangible it's an idea i ne it is an idea about a goods it is not a good patent is directly that you create and invent a goods yes. for example yes that's right here the idea it, it does not create any goods or tangible stuff yeah, it is, it is a service yes. so patent excludes situations which is beyond something which is not a tangible goods which is created or invented so the limitation of patent is to that extent but yes with regard to uh, the idea which you have stated which is very unique and it could be probably marketed 
and from which business could be garnered and uh, we could have uh, remuneration or we could have financial gain that could become just as a copyright or a trademark or a service mark according to what your plan is uh, same thing we have seven syllables of a raga everybody knows it but when uh, dr balamurli krishna creates it in a particular symphony he creates a new raga he invents a raga so that raga is the product right and the way it has been symphonized it still does not become a patent it only becomes a copyright being a literary work so somewhere the concept is a literary work my prima facie thoughts we could probably improvise on it getting more info but initial thoughts certainly at the moment what is stated might not be a patent but yes with regard to how it could be protected of course we could look into and explore areas of copyright uh, trademark as well as service mark because all these comes to a service so service has to be projected it has to be brought into a particular logo a style a manner which is unique plus the whole concept the flow of the start till what the service is going to be provided and the gains the market everything so that could certainly be a possibility i hope it is convincing <laughs> yes please Uh, yes, 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 a process can be, no, process of what the invention is, is patentable, that's what I have in the next, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah, no, no, I understand, the process which can bring out a product and a process which can bring out a service are on different footings patent requires a process which can bring out a product here we have a process of course but we are bringing out a service so service might not come within the purview of patent subject to but my immediate thoughts are services cannot come within the purview of patent product process is there i don't deny that thought process is there we pen it down we have a flow chart we have a complete sequence which is workable which is unique we have never heard before it and if it comes out in the market it is sure to hit all that is fine but it does not bring out a product it is bringing out a service according to you if it is a product baba please come it's not a product so that's the area process of course every ip has a process even making making a song it has a process making a symphony it has a process creating a script it has a process you you might have a, a unique stuff so the process is common but then what is the outcome distinguish it with the number of enactments so as far as patent is concerned as what we have discussed might not be but then of course if we can improvise on it and bring it within that we can have a product which can be sold commercially yes course if we can go into that area we could explore it as well so trademark uh, we have discussed the trademark is valid for 10 years from the date of filing of application i don't want to go into the process of application is very similar we we'll come to service mark now what's the distinguishing feature between trademark and service mark any ideas any thoughts i trust us of course that word itself gives away the trademark is for what product product service mark is for service so if you see the three images fedex is providing a service what is the service we are we know about it google emirates but if we go one slide back what can we see products so that's the distinguishing feature procedure i don't want to go i have it here but it's available infringement this is interesting please have a look very 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 prevalent very prevalent i was when i was a kid i mean at that time we could not dream of adidas so i used to go and window shop and see and whenever i used to see something similar to that papa 
that is cheaper why not but then now you understand why do you we go for that even if it is cheaper and it is a duplicate why do we go for that because we value that particular original that if i wear it yes people will look at me and say yeah, he's wearing an adidas so that value which the product gives you and the pitch which it reaches it raises you to gives you an intent to even if go for a in, infringed copy but you see the satisfaction so that is exactly what the original company needs to protect protect what the value the goodwill and the uh, the the market uh, respect in the market which the product has that all of course this is all very common ones same thing here direct and indirect i don't want to go into the technicals of it it can be uh, people here are wise enough to understand the technicalities of what is uh, the direct and the indirect ways of it okay one thing i want to say offenses by companies because this is what you deal with companies so 114 section 114 of the act if a company commits an offense under this act then the whole company will be liable therefore not only the principal infringer but every person responsible for the company will be liable for the indirect infringement or direct whatever now he could be very serious when it comes to a situation like that who who all could be hauled up certain certainly the ceo md uh, cs uh, anybody who has been given uh, power of attorney to run the day to day affairs of the company all of these people could be accused which may, which might not go into our mind normally but then the section is clear it says if a company even though the company as an entity has been found to be the infringer but of course as an entity it does not have its own uh, so we have people who are connected to it humans who have connected to it and people who hold uh, 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 seats of uh, running the company related to a business all of them could be made liable contributory infringement is something we could understand with the term itself anybody who could contribute in any manner to commit the infringement is a contributor so for example if we go back to this and if i am the person who has created the other infringed copy contributor design i encourage the person yes i can do that for you and you can market it and you will still make money when i create that particular logo contributor i am also liable Take my student yes. You can. You have to redo the process to protect yours once more. Of course, of course, of course. Because the the first creator and the first person protected, it runs through. So the Adidas shoes, how old it is? Yeah, yeah. So if so, we if we see the twenty years finished, then finished after twenty years. Yes. technical oh, technical things are there but i think there is some buffer time within which you can uh, go in for it there is a buffer time uh, if if technically they lose it they lose it and this happened with the domain name it, it all domain names need not be trademarks but some of them could be trademarks so it happened with mcdonalds It, it, it is not that mcdonald lost it somebody registered mcdonald do, uh, domain name in us one unknown person and is sitting quiet mcdonald never understood and never had the vision to understand that sometime everything would be online and they would require a website and they would require a trademark so by the time time they could understand the importance and the value of it it is found that domain name is already registered they had to pay some huge amount to get it back same thing same thing unfortunately domain names then were only on first come first served basis after these things happened now there is an improvement <coughs> sorry improvement is says you will have to show why you are registering it and what is the requirement 
so they have added it the 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 agency which provides domain name is i can so i can is not a government agency at all as a private non profitable ngo but it has been invested with the powers to uh, issue domain names so previously before these big things happened it was first come first served now if i have the vision to understand that uh, icai would be a huge entity in 10 years time i would register icai.com and keep quiet by the time icai understands my god we need a website if we don't have a website we are outdated and when we try to register a website we were sorry not available so then what is the only option pay and buy it so he made money sitting at home only with his vision so thereafter it has been made mandatory that once you try to register you need to align yourself and say why you are choosing this for example i have a domain name registered in my name for my firm i have to align and say why it is and if they, that goes through you get a domain name so some checks have come in of of late because of these issues yes those are on our, on our different enactment because then they have a, a time frame where beyond that it could be shared because other otherwise they become a monopoly and then you have the monopoly restrictive trade practices act uh, for the uh, the pharma i need to check on that but there is because otherwise this is the issue there is no other company which can come in and if at all somebody has to come in it has to have the license from the parent company and the original company to do that uh, of late we had a situation of that with the covid vaccines we had read about it so yes that is prevalent but uh, i need to update on that uh, we have finished with that passing off this is also very prevalent very prevalent if we go to any of the district courts in ernakulam and just sit we will be surprised to see suits being moved for passing off now what is passing off for example pepsi is a very known brand and it has a logo if i'm not mistaken upar mein red on the top it's red and down it's blue the curve i make my own drink same color and name it pepsi and i make the logo red bottom blue top bottle same does it amount to any infringement it does now what is infringement called technically passing off what is done a very well known brand is subjected to an infringement which is very similar and passed off showing it to be the original brand so if you read pepsi and pepsi it doesn't strike very fast same thing bottle baba give me a drink yeah so i think i am drinking pepsi very prevalent very prevalent those 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 uh, uh, labels are made somewhere in uh, delhi you know very local uh, place and all of those are just attached isi logo there's a place in delhi which sells helmets as cheap as 200 bucks 250 bucks isi logo so isi is a logo which gives the authenticity of the quality of the product under indian standards that is just being a fixed view carol bag is famous all dubious stuff carol bag including software cds whatever you name it and you get it so a uh, passing off is that elements of passing off misrepresentation made by a person in the course of trade to prospective customers of his or ultimate consumers of goods or services supplied by him which is calculated to injure the business or goodwill of another trader with a larger entity which causes actual damage to a business or goodwill of the trader by whom the action is brought i think that's clear we don't need to spend more time on that jurisdiction section 134 of trademark act is very clear again the district court is the court of primary instance where you could approach for an infringement a case law if you look at this as very uh, hilarious this has happened this has happened is a case law okay so if we go in <laughs> 
see how similar it is and how difficult it is for a layman to understand which is the original and which is not now if i could take a moment to understand how we could uh, now if if it is from the company side of course it's from the company side that they lose customers probably they lose customers because most of the customers walk into the other place rather than walking into starbucks so they are losing customers but if you if you see from the customers end if you see from the customers end it's after all a cup of coffee or a cup of tea right now the concept that you need to go into starbucks to get a quality of stuff the ambience and the ingredients which are used in a particular that's what makes us go to starbucks if it all i'm not a starbucks fan i don't go into starbucks and all and coffee, coffee cafe day and all that i prefer a normal uh, uh, roadside stall but the fact remains that why do we go there because we value the ingredients the quality the ambience and of course the uh, goodwill of the product being marketed by that particular firm so this was interesting that's why i placed it i need not deep, i mean uh, speak more about that this is something interesting this comes into some of my core areas so i'm more happy speaking about these areas cyber squatting now what is cyber squatting exactly cyber squatters register the domain name but do not post a website under that name we just discussed it 2 minutes back for example mcdonald mcdonald.com is already registered comes under this so if later on there is a site which comes up saying mcdonalds.com how many of us will easily identify it very difficult so it's part of a situation where you have a cyber squatting in this is a case law which happened yahoo.com has been registered by yahoo of course and somebody here from india his name was there i forgot his name yeah he registered yahooindia.com so when yahoo decided to come to india and they had to sorry register an office and have a website yahooindia.com is gone then it took a situation to you know go for a legal recourse and then gain it typo squatters want to buy urls such as google.com 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 all that is with the basic belief that you know somewhere i could defraud defraud something like google so intent is very clear it's not a very a very happy thing to be doing but then that's what people try to do to gain money and make easy uh, money one more look at that i don't need to speak just look at it www without any dot straight how difficult it is to identify it very difficult to identify it and probably the other person if you puts up a website and if it could be of similar service then the original one loses business so it amounts to a lot of loss of money with that we come to the next ip regime geographical indication this has been in the talks very recently we have all heard about uh, the raging debate about uh, gi for rasagulla or rasagulla what is told rasagulla the sweet so it was between west bengal and orissa finally it has been settled with orissa so it's a gi indicator now what does it mean gi indicator uh, alfonso alfonso mangoes has a gi indicator with uh, ratnagiri in maharashtra we have a gi right we have a gi a thodu pula varakul sorry yeah so it is just that the product which is very uh, famous is directly linked to a geographical uh, indication for example a territory so i have placed some of that tirupati laddu has a gi tirupati laddu yes it has a gi aranmula directly so some of them i have just exhibited just for our reference that the 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 small list is here i am not uh, updated with uh, tirur beetle leaf and all that but then yes it is available online so i believe yes you have a gi for that uh, dindigul locks uh, there is one more place for locks in uttar pradesh 
but I, I don't know if you have a GI. Yes, that has a GI. That's a GI. Uh, Palani the Prasadam, it has a GI. Palani Panchamratam, yeah, that's there. It's there. It has a GI. So these are uh, uh, products which are directly linked with a geographical territory and has a protection. Procedure, I don't want. So these are some famous ones which I have just. Okay, jurisdiction. Again, District Court 66 1 of the GI of Goods Act 1999. Again, it's the District Court as a court of first instance where you can approach interesting case uh, case uh, law where uh, ITC, uh, the T board sued ITC. Why? Because uh, uh, ITC brought out a product by name Darjeeling tea. Darjeeling tea and tea board objected saying that Darjeeling is a place in a so-and-so place. So that particular place cannot be used by ITC because of the reasons as I said. We are proprietor being of GI Darjeeling tea board and the court uh, denied the interim injection to the tea board of India saying that uh, ITC could. Okay. Now that's again debatable. But I don't want to go into, <laughs> go into it. Land variety is a very, uh, this is something which I'm not very well aware of, but it's a very recent development to help plant varieties gain protection. It is very sensitive area. Only when I read about it, that I could apply my mind and see how sensitive and important it is as a law. If we understand a lot of our traditional varieties are lost. Traditional varieties of rice lot of them are lost. All that we get now are the improvised and the, the, the scientifically mutated or genetically, all those varieties are more prevalent. But the traditional ones, which were the original ones, most of the seeds are now not available, something of that sort. So the situation which prompted the government to bring in an enactment is to protect such varieties or such varieties that are created, both. It's a very sensitive area. Only when we think about it, imagine original mango, Alphonso mango, no more, no more available. And you get only genetically mutated stuff tomorrow. Uh, it's a loss for humanity. It's loss for health, loss for children on various things. So there was one huge debate with regard to brinjal, one type of brinjal. <laughs> so it's a very serious area. The act seeks to grant protection to plant breeders who have developed plant varieties by the use of their intellectual capabilities so as to boost the agricultural development in the country. It's a basic uh, uh, framework of why the particular enactment has been brought in. Procedure, I don't want to go in. I won't be able to say because I've not done it. But this is all bookish for me as well. But then yes, with regard to section 64 of the act, it is for the recourse when there is an infringement. I want to take you to something more interesting, which I want to, how much time I have? I have time, right? I have time? 15, 20 minutes? I have time, yeah. Because uh, these are all fine. I want to take you to what the core issue is. Now I come to recent developments in IPR. These are some recent developments. If you can just go through the slide, please. I'll, I'll run, run through the slide for you. Service marks were introduced later on. It was not there before it came later on. Graphic representation, shapes, and combination of colors were introduced in the definition of trademark. All these are improvements which have come in of late, keeping abreast with the requirements of uh, global IPR. Something more that I want to, yes. This is where I want. All of us to have our attention to it's a, again a very serious prevalent emerging fast developing area artificial intelligence and ip now if we if we have a look at it as i was just talking to uh, my friend there all of our journals are now available online okay softwares are made created either without assistance of AI or with the assistance of AI as well. 
Now, what is artificial intelligence? It's nothing but uh, algorithms which tend to think and act like human mind. In short, how does it come into IP? And how is it related to IP? And why is it so serious that we need to be concerned about AI in IP? Are some things which I need all of us to break up our minds for. I'll take you around with it. Now, there has been a WIPO, that's World Intellectual Property Organization, is an arm of the UN which solely caters to intellectual property worldwide and its development concerns, et cetera. Now with the presence of IP, which has percolated into almost most of the industries, it could be pharmaceutical, it could be automotive, it could be legal, it could be healthcare, it could be banking, it could be defense, you name it and AI is there. There is no law in India as on date recognizing AI, defining AI, or uh, uh, accepting AI. But all industries or most industries in India that are depending on AI in one manner or the other. Now, do you feel it is something critical? Yes, it certainly is. We have a situation where we are depending on something without any regulations to regulate or curb or protect if there is a, a, a illegality committed. Now, how could that happen or could that happen at all? Any of us have seen the movie Robo, Will Smith, if I am telling the movie correct. Yeah. You remember the story? Is it scary? It's very scary. The movie shows a situation where uh, there's a mass production of robots which provide different services to human beings. For example, a robo for cooking, a robo for uh, doing washing, etc., a robo for uh, healthcare, a robo for uh, driving you around, a robo as your bodyguard, various aspects. And then comes a situation where uh, one of the key creators of the robo is found dead. And uh, the hero of the movie comes in to investigate. It is almost trying to be closed to be a suicidal death until when the hero thinks that it could probably not be a suicide, it could be a murder. And he has his gut instincts focus that it could be committed by one particular robo who was always around with this particular person. Nobody believes him. Nobody believes him. Imagine a situation where in, in, in Japan, we have robots providing house care 20 years before. They are still there. It started 20, 25 years back. Old age people in Japan, Japan has a huge old, I mean, senior citizen population. Most of them are living alone and uh, they have to depend on something. So they have uh, robots for them. Imagine a situation if the robot goes rogue and commits murder. This is one aspect which the movie showed. And with my cyber instinct, the first thing it is, my God, finished. We are done. Whom will you prosecute? Would you prosecute the robo? Would you prosecute the creator? I mean, who assembled it? Or would you prosecute the person who wrote the algorithm? With the laws we have at hand, we won't be able to. So the scene is pretty scary. There was another instance where a lady researcher who created an AI was monitoring the AI and it suddenly found that the AI was searching online to find a way how to kill the creator. This has happened. It is available online. And she has documented it, stating that she was stunned. Because when she wrote the algorithm, she never even dreamt that the AI could be looking and searching for means to kill the creator. That is her. There have been other instances where the creators of AI have already come in public and said, Baba, it is true, I have created him, but I certainly cannot tell what he will do, how he will do, when he will do, to what extent he will do, I cannot tell. Because apart from AI, you have something called self-learning AIs. They have the capacity to self-learn, adapt, improve, and then act on their own. 
So it's coming as close to what a human mind can do. So imagine there have been situations where operations have been conducted by robotic arms in one particular uh, continent, which is assisted by a, a doctor sitting in another continent. It has happened in medical uh, history. But imagine we have a situation where a doctor itself is a robo and he comes and suppose he is operating upon uh, the president of a country and a foreign hand gains control of this robo and then just finishes the heart artery. I might be very, uh, you know, it might sound foolish now, but with the pace at which AI is going forward, it could be a huge, issue, huge, huge uh, issue. Now, after all the fun we had now, coming back into AI with regard to IP, how is it important? So there have been consultations uh, which have been uh, spearheaded by WIPO, and this happened in the years 2019 and 2020. There have been three consultations which have already happened where various experts on various fields have come and provided their details and their thoughts as regards to how AI can be regulated, whether AI needs to be regulated. Two schools of thoughts are always there. You have two schools of thoughts always. Some people say that AI is, uh, you don't need something special to regulate it. The laws now are enough. But there are some people who says, no, this is a different area. We need to focus on it specifically. And AI is something which has not happened before. And we do not have any laws which can relate to it. So we need to focus on it. So these all things have come. It's available online. The reports are online. I'll just share a few things which I feel very relevant with all the professionals here. Now the concerns with regard to IP. I'll go back. Yeah. The questions regarding inventorship and ownership. Uh, Chairman, sir. Imagine AI giving a thought tomorrow, which is not heard of. How do you register it? In whose name? And here we have situations where it could be uh, that it is AI assisted and AI created. So you have two schools now debating on that, whether it could be AI assisted or created. Both of these are very happening on live as on date. Then we come to invention and works where AI systems autonom autonomously invents and creates without human intervention. Create something for the first time, invent something. Can it be patented? I'm not sure if all of you are aware. There was one court in Australia which accepted AI created material that could be copyrighted. I'll, 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 I'll go with it. Where is it? Yeah. Australia became the first country to judicious Judicious, judici judicially rule in favor of AI inventorship. Okay, this was the court of first instance. Now, what happened? However, the full federal court has now weighed in, overturned that decision. So, there also you have a fear somewhere within the minds of the judges, also, as to how can we allow AI to be considered and accepted as an entity which is parallel or equivalent to human mind and make him a creator that could be brought in to register IP. As of now, I don't think any other country, if I remember correct, uh, one country, EU was thinking about it, but then it has not happened. In India, now we have thought about AI. AI has not been considered, has not been accepted. There's no legal entity or legal recognition to AI as on date in India. but. Guru Granth Sahib has been given legal entity status in India. Now, if we see all of our temples in India, the Lord is an entity, but is always a minor. The Lord to whom millions go and pray legally is always a minor. That's why we all have these boards and the trustees managing the affairs of the Lord. He's a minor. The whole world so the law says the Lord is a minor. Now, if we can say something like that for AI, which has not happened, but India is, of course, in the rule and in the in the sphere of understanding how to align itself. India can't fall back without, you know, taking assistance of AI. It's something which is time of the future. 
but then how safe how appropriate is being considered having come then we are coming into resolving of disputes now how does it uh, how do we take it forward if we have an ip dispute for example a copyright dispute what do you, what do we do if somebody approaches you i have an issue what do we do the first thing that can be done is probably send a uh, uh, a notice regarding desist or is one particular term for it anybody then in focus cease and desist letter okay so you make the person aware hello you are not aware so i am taking this first instance to make you aware i am a protected person for this particular uh, copyrighted material i inform you and make you aware that what we are doing is a direct infringement of my uh, protected material and i request you to cease and desist from doing that forthwith failing which i would be constrained to take appropriate legal proceedings against you okay if the person responds saying i am extremely sorry i was unaware and i shall immediately stop fine but what if he does not there could be a person say we'll take it to court let's see or he might say if we go to court they might not come and you know follow it up or maybe we can win it what next next is what is that we can escalate to the court of first jurisdiction which is the district court in most of the ip cases we have seen go in put in your complaint trial fight it out get a decision is only way there is another way which can come out any idea after the search and desist the person tells that you know uh, i may be wrong but i was not aware and i have invested so much in my uh, 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 business so could we sit and you know negotiate so it could be either arbitration or negotiation either ways could be taken forward depending upon the parties involved many might not you know be acceptable or amenable to what it is but sensible people of course would try to you know save their business also at the same time save the situation as well so that the business also continues and things are sorted out so you have adr which can be taken up judicial proceedings of course you have catena of judgments you can find this way and that way both but the basic idea is yes the person who has been granted the protection of ip should be protected otherwise there is no you there is no rule of law we have all these enactments and i go of course the scene which i saw told about the movies there have been situations where the madras high court has given outright injunctions and it should not be done so where do you implement the injunction can you implement the injunction in texas can you implement the injunction in australia so these are some very challenging gray areas which are very prevalent in the days to come there are a lot of people who are uh, they are pushing forward the eu especially is pushing forward for a global regime to control all these things with the common law there again even in the un we understand how uh, sovereign states function if two states says yes one says veto it veto it plus at the end of it russia has brought out a full recommendation which is now very debatable now especially with the scene with ukraine and a lot of companies a lot of countries have backed that instance with regard to uh, regulating cyberspace all the cyberspace laws basically are us oriented till date but the time when russia brought out and said we should have it this way so it's still being considered it's being debated it was debated during the war so that was another debate that how can you debate something which has been brought out by a state which is you know uh, at war so these are all things which are happening we hope that the law uh, comes into a situation where uh, we have a consensus worldwide to get better protection of uh, ip rights as we had discussed this is over international protections are based on these three conventions which is basically the paris convention the bern convention and the madrid convention the each of it is with regard to a particular ip one is for industrial property one is for artistic work one is for registration of marks based on this we all function the other two are stated here as the trips agreement trade related aspects of intellectual property rights all of these gain weightage with the influence of un under wipo any doubts any questions i think i have wound out 
my uh, stuff. Any questions? Anybody online, offline? Court of first instance. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry, I couldn't bring that out. For trademarks, it is regional. And for the southern region, it is Chennai. You have regional. So depending if I am in Delhi, uh, the Delhi uh, uh, office of, but for the southern states, all of the southern states, it is Chennai. For copyright, it is only Delhi. Only in Delhi. Yeah. And the rest. Uh, no. The jurisdiction for registering the trademark is not the jurisdiction of the court. The jurisdiction where the entity the is, is huh, where is the company is in Cochin. Infringement of a cop of a of an IP, which is of a company in Cochin, then the jurisdiction of the court which arises would be the district court in Cochin. That's the. the uh, I can get that to you. It copyright registration authority is basically in in Delhi. It uh, I'll give you the name. I'll give you the name. Just a minute. Yes, just like any other suit, any other suit that we file, the jurisdiction comes around from where we launch the uh, and the cause of action arises. So it is here and the opposite side might be in Delhi, Bombay, wherever, but then the notice will, will go and we serve summons. If it is on the civil side, notice goes. If it's on the criminal side, the summons goes and the person need to come before court. If he doesn't come, then it escalates. Then in the criminal side, we issue a warrant and even in the uh, civil side, it could either be ex parte or injunction could be granted against him without hearing him. So these are yes, objection which is sustainable in law. Yeah. 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 No, see, the infringement can happen only once you get, gain knowledge of it. Infringement can only come to the person who is concerned only when he gains knowledge of it. Aishwarya Rai's photo is used by millions of businesses showing as a brand ambassador. Right? Aishwarya Rai will not be able to go and understand where all. But if she passes by Cochin and she sees something like Ramanika doing it, she can immediately take an action. So knowledge and then the purpose to escalate it and take legal recourse. Two concepts. I, I had to, one minute. I am just checking online. I have been there, I've done it, but then <laughs> off and the name. Of the office. It's called copyright office. Plot number 32, Baudik Sampada Bhavan, sector 14, Dwaraka. Copyright office. That's the name. Any other questions? It is, it is restricted to what is stated in that. So I can make other same normal post if you want to. No. You need to understand the why you are taking a trademark based on which you will understand what is the requirement of your business. If you feel that tomorrow it would require 21 and the rest as well, from a safety register, then it sells. Otherwise, later on you will have to again upgrade with the required fee for the required clause. It would be more tedious. So if you are slightly more far sighted, 
you can finish it in one go. And by the time you go in for the other one, if somebody objects, you are finished. This, that comes from experience. Later you might feel that, I mean, now we don't need to spend. Just keep it this much, then we'll be stuck. That's the case. Yes. Remember, you need to have a vision. Tomorrow, if I do it and somebody says, I have done it before, I have a, a talent first, and if you believe in, and if he sustains, you are finished. Just because of what? Lack of vision. So be slightly innovative to understand. Even if you shell out a few uh, bucks more, you are at least uh, protected by the law with your uh, business. If your business needs a trademark that bad. Uh, suppose if I have a right, suppose if I have a moral idea, right? I have a process for that also. That's also, the source code of the same. And the source code is correct for the program. Yes. Do I need to protect the process also with the program? Or the source code is same? So your end product is what? Who's the idea? Right. It becomes the source code. So, whatever the process is, even if it is in readable format, ultimately you have got that particular thing consolidated in the source code. Right? So, protecting the source code itself is fair enough. It's fair enough. But then, if you are I mean, more uh, anticipating more of it, and you feel that even if the thought process which you have sketched, probably to get to the source code is important, you could consider getting it. But I think source code, uh, the source code alone, alone is fine. The product of your process is there, which is the key, which is to be protected. Here is the situation, we don't have that product as of now. We are only in the thought phase. So it has a different footing. Here we have a product, protect it. Here we are yet to get it. We are yet to launch it. We are yet to implement it. But yes, the thought is original. It has never happened. It has a definite intent of grabbing market and uh, giving you revenue. You are much more advanced than that. So you can be saved by uh, registering the source code. Source code registration is one side, but in my professional uh, journey, easily uh, it's a common chain. Tremendous. It could be a website. Anything has a source code. Software, you have a website, you have a whatever. You need to have a source code. For. And for other people, if you have change and you have something there, then you make up there. Always, it's very sensitive. If your business grows and it is fully built on that source code, okay, that is what your business is for. Right? So it is as serious as that. Yes, That was a very uh, insightful session on uh, intellectual property right by our speaker and today, great doctor. Now, I request the secretary of the Dr. Ramos, C.S. to come to the forum. I request the special K.S. Anand A.S. to present the monitor, last speaker of the day, and today, great doctor. It was a fabulous information about the <laughs> intellectual property because nowadays most of the people are starting the business with their vision. So we need to protect our IP or trademark, whatever may be. Otherwise, sometimes we in a developed stage someone will be taken our properties thank you so much advocate premna for the fabulous session as our chairman told it was a eminent speakers <laughs> hearing thank you so much
and I, I thank all my members, those who are attended today's session online and offline. Thank you.